So guys, obviously you get through all of this, we've just gone through, you've got your finance approved, you get to auction day, and then you've got to contend with us. Now, I know that's often the scariest part and it's the most daunting when you get up there and, uh, you know, and you're in front of a lot of people, you've got a place of beard, emotions are running really high. But I just wanted to go through a few things that can hopefully help you to, I guess, collect your thoughts before auction day, make sure you're going in there with a clear strategy and that will really help you to be in a better position when you're actually placing a bid. A lot of the time when people are really scared at auction or they're nervous about the process, it's, it's generally um, due to perhaps a lack of experience in the process, maybe a little bit of um, you know, lack of understanding. And I often find that when people take the time to become really familiar with how it all works, you can feel a lot more comfortable. So, you go through some of the, the points. Now, as I said, you need to go in there with a, with a clear strategy but not too much. Every auction is totally different. So you can't go into an auction saying, well, I'm going to place this bid, I'm going to do this, I'm going to X, Y, Z, because then that other person comes in and they do something that you weren't expecting and the whole thing is totally um, you know, gone out the window. So when I say you've got to strategize, just have a think about what you might do generally in this couple of different scenarios. So if the auctioneer calls for a bid, what are you going to do? Are you going? Are you confident to be the first bidder? I mean, it's something we always recommend because generally, if you are the first bidder, it shows a lot of confidence to your, um, to your competitors. And everyone's there in the same boat, they're all quite nervous. So if you show that confidence to start with, you can often put yourself in a really good position to own the property. So, you know, that might be part of your strategy going in. I'm going to make the first bid. Another th uh, part of your strategy to consider is what happens if it does approach my limit? That's something which is, of course, happening quite a lot at the moment. People are going into an auction who may have a preconceived idea of where you would be happy to pay, and it does get to that limit and perhaps a pass of it. Now, of course, there is a difference between where you see value and where you can afford. Now, if you've got a hard budget and that's where you can afford, you, you have to respect that. But if it's where you see value, that's, I think, where you look at perhaps a slide that Christian was showing just before in terms of where those prices may be in a few years' time, is that five or ten thousand dollars going to be something which, in the future, you're very happy you paid? And a lot of the time, it can be. So it's about having those strategies in place and just thinking, in certain scenarios throughout the auction, what would I do if that happened? So as I said, bidding with confidence. That doesn't only just come from starting the auction. Uh, that also comes throughout the auction too. So if Let's say, for example, you place a bid, somebody else takes their time, they maybe take 30, 40 seconds, a minute even, it seems like 10 minutes when it's an option. Um, they place another bid. If you know that you're still well within what you pay, bid again, straight away. Don't, don't give them a second. Straight in there with that next bid. If you're well within your budget, you're well within what you would be willing to pay for the property, why wouldn't you? And what you do to that person who has taken a really long time to decide is you give them the impression that you're buying it no matter what, that you perhaps have a bigger budget than them. The reality could be the opposite. They may actually have more money than you, but it's it's all about that, that psychological impression that you're confident, you're here to buy, and you're going to keep bidding no matter what. So right throughout the auction, no matter what the situation is, even if you're at your limit, bidding with confidence, even if it's that last thousand, bidding quickly and bidding with confidence will really help you. So as I said, setting yourself a base limit is definitely really important. You need to have those couple of figures in mind. If it is a hard limit, as I said, that's very important to know. And that's where speaking with uh, your, your financial, um, with finance brokers beforehand will give you an idea of, of what, maybe if you have any play within that. Um, but again, you need to also think about where you could stretch to and, and what you'd be willing to do to stretch to in. Wide. So just having those figures in mind really helps. A couple of really basic things, but of course a lot of people do forget them, and it's having the right things in place. When you get to an auction, there's nothing more disappointing than arriving and finding you can't register because you haven't squared off those details with the agent. So for example, if both parties, if there's only two parties on the contract, you need to have both parties in attendance, or you will need to have an authority for one of the other parties. And that gives the auctioneer the right to then sign on their behalf for you. 
So really important to cover those things off um, with the agent beforehand, just make sure they know your situation and they can give you the appropriate forms heading into the auction and make sure you've got all of that covered. Um, so really, really important, especially companies, things like that as well. If you're bidding on behalf of a company, we've got to have proof of directorship, proof that you can act on behalf of the company. Super important. It's nothing worse than missing out and being able to bid over a, a small paperwork technicality. So, a lot of people ask that, and what actually happens when a property is passed in? You know, we, we speak a lot at auction, especially as the auctioneer, you'll hear us saying that the, the highest bidder has that first right of negotiation. Now that's a courtesy that's extended to the highest bidder and essentially what that refers to is that they're given the opportunity to meet or pay the vendor's reserve price if it hasn't been reached um, and then they have a, an opportunity to negotiate with the seller. Now if that highest bidder does not decide to move forward and purchase the property, we'll then engage with all the buyers that were at the auction and more than happily give them an opportunity. So if you weren't the highest bidder and you did miss out, it's often worth making sure you keep in close contact with the agent in the few hours after the auction. Maybe after the auction too, make it aware, make that known to them. So maybe just have a quick chat with the agent and go, look, I know you're gonna negotiate with the highest bidder. I do still have interest. Um, if they don't choose to move forward, can you please let me know straight away? Uh, because again, nothing worse than finding out that the property may have sold after the auction and it might have been a price that you paid. So I think it sort of, sort of goes back to what Ray said at the very start of um, his introduction, is being on the front foot is so important in a market like this. You've got to be proactive. You've got to make sure that you're front of mind too. And speaking from an auctioneer's point of view, it's I can see how buyers may get frustrated in a market like this where there is so much activity and they feel like maybe the agents um, haven't been able to give them the time that they need, things like that. But they are dealing with a lot of volume. So I can assure you that the buyers who are front of mind, making sure they're keeping in good touch with the agent, you make sure that there's no chance of, you, you know, you're not, you're not getting an opportunity with that property. So that's what happens when we passed in. Vendor bid, another thing that's really important to understand. There's a couple of reasons why we use a vendor bid. One is an auctioneer may use it to start the auction, so that's when everybody gets there and the standard silence, no one wants to bid, and we use it just to nudge things along, give you an indication as to where we think we should start. That's quite common. Another way is that if the bidding does slow and it is at a level that's perhaps below where our reserve price is, we can't sell the property at that level, uh, it's a way for us to be quite transparent with the buyers and give you an indication of maybe a bit of a baseline. Um, so here's, here's a figure, we've drawn a line in the sand, any bidding above that, maybe we're in a range that we can talk with the vendor, you know, we're getting closer. So just to try and be transparent as possible. So really important to not confuse the reserve price with, um, with the vendor bid. They are two very different things. And they, the reserve price is um, quite often a higher figure. The vendor bid, you will not see that used very, very, very odd if it is used when the property is above the reserve price. It's usually to either start an auction or to give buyers an indication of to where we need to be to start discussing with the seller. So, this is often something which is quite confusing for, for buyers and I totally get it. You hear them say quite often, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm not gonna increase my own bid. Why would I bid against myself? And the funny thing about that is that then when you go and have a negotiation after the auction, the property's passed in, what that is in effect is you are increasing your own bid. The great thing about the auction is that it happens a little bit more transparently and you get a chance to do that on the auction floor. So the reason why that is beneficial to you as a buyer is that no, at no point throughout the campaign is the seller more motivated to sell their home than when it is currently under an auction, in under an auction condition. So if they are going to be willing to be flexible on their reserve price, if they're going to be willing to negotiate, that's the time when they're going to be most negotiable. Afterwards, there's not much pressure on them anymore. You know, as a seller, when you pass it in an auction, what's another week now? You know, they could wait. They could see what else is out there. They could go for another open home. They may instruct the agent to call back through all the other buyers, any of the buyers that didn't have their finance approved in time, because now they might have an opportunity. So 
whilst it might seem counterintuitive to increase your own bid, you can genuinely come up against more competition afterwards because that pressure is off the vendor. They are in a position where they can then uh, go back to the whole marketplace. So doing that under auction conditions as a buyer is actually a really good way to negotiate. You're in a quite powerful position. Um, so just in regards to authorities, bidding, someone bidding on behalf of you, it's, that's totally okay, but you just need to um, provide an authority prior to the auction. Now it can be someone to bid for you, a friend, a family member. It can also be from one of the agents if you, I know, if you don't have someone in the area, you can give them an authority to bid via the telephone. Um, so the majority of the auctions, they are live stream, so it gives you the opportunity to watch the proceedings and you can instruct the person that's bidding on your behalf um, how you wish to, based on what you're, you're seeing transpire. Went through that before with buying your company name, so really that was all I wanted to go through, just a few points at auction. I guess the one thing I will leave you with is in this current market, just be decisive. You really need to be going in there to an auction with a clear plan in place that you're going to confidently bid and with the view to buy it. If you hesitate, as Ray said earlier, unfortunately at the moment, you may miss out to someone who's being a little bit more decisive.